can't give it to you now. We have to wait for the timer to finish. Let's go do this, okay? Can't you be able to talk to everyone in Australia right now? In a suburban home in Toronto, Canada, this is the toughest interview I've ever had to do. What do they say? Hi. Other than hi. You can do this, Carly, I know you can. You can do this for a because we really want to know. Great. You're doing really good. You had it. You were getting This is really there. good. You were in the zone. Don't get out ah. of it. It's frustrating. I know you're nervous. Ah. Because Don't inside this 18-year-old girl ah. is an intelligent young woman trying her hardest to communicate. Hi. Hi, Carly. My name's Alex. How are you today? But today, something has set Carly off. I'm well, thanks, Carly. How are you? Mm -hmm. Let me stop for a few minutes. Let me see if I can just... <laughs> she's feeling pain because she's not able to... <laughs> she wants to... And for now, we'll have to wait. You got this? What do you do when there's a pretty, pretty girl when mummy's dressed up all nice? Half a world away, <laughs> on a Queensland beach, a playful young boy who also has autism. Look over there. I guess I just want him to be happy. I'd like him to get married, maybe, and have kids one day. That would be nice. We are about to go into theatre. I'll give him these mad clothes. Max Rogers came into the world seven years ago. <laughs> oh, my God. Sorry? I'm about to have a cesarean. <laughs> <laughs> All the signs were that he was healthy and normal. Oh. He's my son. Yeah, he's mine too. Can't have him all to yourself. <laughs> but I had this overwhelming feeling, it's got to be a boy, you know, like, in, well, and then he just said, yeah, you got another little wallaby, you know. <laughs> Max's dad is the dual rugby league and union international, Matt Rogers. Rogers! Football's easy compared to what? what we've been through with Max. And his mum, Chloe, is a former model, famous as the Jeans West girl. Shots in three leg lengths. Another way, Jeans West. <laughs> Young Max had good genes and loving parents. Come on, Max, do something good. This is your debut. But soon after Max's first birthday, Matt began to worry that something wasn't right. He was developing like a normal child, and then all of a sudden it just stopped, and he became obsessed with little things, like his, his little Thomas the Tank Engine car. He'd sit there and he'd just play with the wheel. And, uh... Oh, he'd stack cans. I came out one morning and he would be in the, in the pantry just stacking cans of baked beans, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, with just a look that there were, the lights yeah. were on but no one was home. Yeah, quite distant. Very yeah. distant, glazed over look. And he used to have some pretty serious tantrums, very violent tantrums, often directed at me. Uh, he would try and eye gouge or, you know, attack me. And I just thought he was a really difficult child. And I'm thinking, no, this is not right. This this is is, not. There's something not right here. Concerned, Matt and Chloe saw a specialist who diagnosed Max with ASD. Autism Spectrum Disorder. When I heard that word autism, I, I didn't know what to think. I, you know, the, the most I knew was probably like most people, is like Rain Man. All airlines have crashed at one time or another. That doesn't mean that they are not safe. Qantas. Qantas? Qantas never crashed. No, no. <laughs> Carly, like Raymond in Rain Man, is severely autistic and severely intelligent. She's a twin, born 14 minutes before her sister Taryn. Early on, her parents, Arthur and Tammy, Notice the twins were anything but similar. Happy birthday, Taryn and Carly. Oh, that's very... Carly wasn't feeding easily. She was crying incessantly. So we kind of had a sense pretty much from the get-go that something was going to be different with Carly. Hi, Carly. Hi, Mommy. Hi, Matthew. Are you recording? Yeah. Carly, wave hello. Carly was always distant and often 
out of control. Carly. Stepped in and stepped in. Carly. I don't care. Carly. And she was this whirling dervish that would be in constant motion, you know, sometimes grabbing a chair and climbing up to cupboards that were, you know, up high in the kitchen and pulling things out and dropping them on the floor. And just as Tammy and I would go and try to pick those things up, she'd dash to the fridge, pull things out of the fridge, get her hands into peanut butter or cream cheese smear that on the wall and just as you were clearing that up she'd run upstairs and fill the bathtub and the bathtub would overflow and if it sounds like I'm you know exaggerating that could be one afternoon that could be one part of one day desperate they sought help and turned to therapist Howard Delau hi Howard hi Carly you say hi to Adam I was shocked to how bright she was, even though she wasn't able to communicate. Howard began a radical therapy called Applied Behaviour Analysis, or ABA. It involves constant reinforcement and repetition of simple tasks. Let's go. What is ABA? If I was to teach you how to tie your shoe, I would break it down into small, simple steps. So what would be the first step for you to tie a shoe? What do you think? Uh, learn to tie a knot? No, it would actually be lifting up the laces. So we would practice lifting up your laces maybe 50 to 60 to 200 times until you got that perfect. Once you can do that, we would practice crisscrossing, and then we practice pulling. And um, it's breaking down everything into micro pieces and giving praise for it. That praise has its critics. They claim ABA reduces autistic children to the status of trained dogs because of the way it rewards good behaviour with treats. Chip. Every time Carly does something right, she gets a chip. Chip. So what do I have to do to get a chip? That. <laughs> That's what you have to do. Okay, moving back to hand over hand. No, stay up. Pick that up. Stand up. Good girl. Hours each day of a single task being repeated ad nauseum. Let's cut. Let's cut. Let's cut. It took patience and was painstaking. Looking, Carly. Nice cutting. Slowly and surely, Carly retained what she learnt and then learnt to type. A breakthrough, because now she could communicate. Justin. <laughs> all right, JT, you. We had all these questions for her. I mean, we had 10, 11, 12 years of questions for her because it was like meeting a, a new person. You know, our daughter was meeting our daughter for the first time after 10 or 11 years. Carly's life tumbled out. A Catholic code. What were you learning about your daughter? I think the first things we learned about Carly was that uh, she had this wicked sense of humor. I remember we were with the psychiatrist that we were seeing to help us with some medications, and she said to Carly, you know, I notice you're sort of staring off places. Um, I see that you seem to be happy one minute and then you look sad the next minute. You know, are you seeing or hearing things? And Carly types out, I see dead people. And the doctor, of course, didn't get it, so she's quite concerned. I see. And Howard said, it's from the movie The Sixth Sense. I see dead people. What? It just brought him to life. I remember going in there and just being in tears. Oh. Wow. <laughs> A normal little boy now. If he's healthy and happy, then, then we're happy. Carly Fleischman is unlocking the mystery of autism. So you're going to start off with your high? Until she learned to communicate, no one really knew what autistic children were thinking or feeling. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. How are you? Good. Because she typed slowly, I gave Carly a list of questions before our interview so she could prepare her answers. Describe for me what it's like to have autism. Imagine yourself in a room that had loud noise playing in it all the time. 
You also find yourself overwhelmed with smells coming from that room. Now imagine trying to have a conversation with someone or even trying to follow instructions. That's what it's like to have autism. Okay. Here in downtown Toronto, these city sounds are normal to most of us. But to Carly, these smells, sights and sounds are loud and layered. It is a sensory overload. Now to cope, Carly has to make noise of her own, like humming or even yelling. Any output at all to block out all this input. I get looks all the time from people that are not sure why I am making a noise, or looks from young children that notice I am not doing or acting the same way as everyone else. Carly is revealing so much about autism. She told me of her frustration, showed me her intelligence. She was game to take me on, and I was silly enough to think I stood a chance. Oh, <laughs> But she carlied you. So she won. What? Three, four. Oh! And she could have won here. She uh, she let you so go there. She let me go there. Yeah. She she let me, I guess. Well. Yeah, come. because look, she she had four right here. Yeah. You had to go here. I so she carlied you, right? Go really high. Go really high. In Australia. ABA is also transforming lives. Who is it? Remember young Max Rogers? Locked off, unresponsive, unlikely to ever lead a normal life. Twinkle, twinkle. His parents, Chloe and Matt, enrolled him at Little Souls on the Gold Coast, one of the few schools in Australia using applied behaviour analysis. Ready? What colour? Just like Carly, simple tasks repeated and rewarded. Wow, look what we get! Yay! What does this say? Max kept trying. Mum and Dad never gave up. What does this say? Never gave in. I remember going in there and just being in tears, just watching him do stuff that I just didn't think he'd ever be able to do. ABA therapy did was it just it just brought him to life, you know. And I, I had people say to me, "It's like you're, you're training a dog." I'm like, "Well, look, it's a better result, you know." At the end of the day, like I want my son back. Yeah, he's he's almost like a, a normal little boy now. Yeah, but he, he doesn't he doesn't say like he, he doesn't say things like you would say it, like, "Oh, I don't like this." He's like, well, "What's going on here?" Or you know, like he's he's sort of. And this is what I love about him. Like he, he takes quotes out of movies and he uses them in context to how he feels. Sure. So what was he, what was he saying? I think you bought him an ice block the other day and you open it and he goes, come to Papa. <laughs> He'd been watching the, the Smurfs <laughs> or something. <laughs> and and like, then another day he, we, I spiked his hair up and he was looking in the mirror and he goes, hello, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got it. How proud of her are you? Wow. <laughs> How proud. Uh, you know, I, 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 she's literally hero status to me. There's little Carly can't do. She's written a book and now goes to college where she's often top of her classes. And all of this while still dealing with all that it means to be autistic. It's not even just the noise that bothers Carly, it's the fact that the building is so warm, the uh, breeze from people walking by, the different smells that you get from perfumes, and young teenagers not wearing deodorant. Yes. For Carly in the hallway when we were waiting uh, to get into the gymnasium, she had her hand over her ear and she was actually humming. And what she was doing was changing the sounds of every uh, buddy coming in. You put your hand over your ear and you just make a humming sound. Mm, you block out all the noise around you. And Carly changes the intake and she's focusing on that one sense to block out all her other senses. I understand, okay. One sense and one day at a time, Carly is breaking down barriers.
every time she writes something sort of cheeky or funny or insightful or, or powerful or moving, and I actually see her write it or she writes it and sends it to me in an email, I get that, that little jab in the stomach. And of course, it's pride, and it's also a little bit of um, awe. You know, she's just a remarkable human being. Max Rogers is also thriving. He's now enrolled in a mainstream school, but today has come back to Little Souls to say thank you. Look who it is! Hello! Hello, Max! Come here! Oh, hi! Who are you? Big hug and kiss? There's a lesson for all of us here. Autistic children and their parents need help and support as early as possible. The earlier on you catch it, the easier it is for, to work them out of their little quirky behaviours so that they then can integrate into a mainstream school like Max has. And, you know, between the t ages of two to six, I believe the statistics are something around 70% of kids that have early intervention go on to have some semblance of a normal schooling life unassisted. So the stats are there, it's just, you know, the money isn't. Max still struggles with his speech sometimes. <laughs> But he has no problems showing his emotions. Come here. Like, I miss you. Did you miss me? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes! Oh, you're yeah. Oh. Just wanted to say a big thank you to you guys for all the hard work you put in over the years. He would not be the person he is today and he wouldn't have been able to go to a mainstream school if it wasn't for what you guys have done. Do you make it all to me? Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> there's still struggles, there's still like, I remember a few years ago saying to Chloe like, if all that, if, and I was so upset with myself when I said it, and I said if all that kids were normal, life would be so much easier. You know, and I, I, just, I remember saying, I wish I could just put the words back in when I said it. Because Max is who he is. Exactly. Oh, you know, we were watching some videos this morning of him before he got diagnosed and then yeah, just sort of been through so back. much and then yeah. to be where he is now. Yeah, so. I still remember that first yes. day. I just want him to be healthy and happy. You know, I think if he's healthy and happy, then, then we're happy. I'm a big boy. Yeah. You're you a big boy. School. Yeah. You'll put me down in a minute. <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> That's a good one, eh? That's so funny. It's so funny. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Just that. And, and, um, 